Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 6, St. Paul encouraged the Philippian church to be confident of one thing, that God who began a good work in them will be faithful to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I know that we have gone through some very difficult times and we are currently going through some difficult times and maybe for a while we'll be going through these difficult times. I must confess that it has been a very stressful time for many of us. And the truth is, every single day we thank God for His grace that has brought us through. And every day we look forward to His continued, renewed grace to go through that day. And so as we come to you every week, we come to encourage, we come to challenge, we come to strengthen, and to pray that God's Holy Spirit would enable and empower you we come to share with you the good news of the gospel of Jesus, that if you don't know him, you will trust him whom to know his life eternal. And so this week, as we share with you, we are going to be speaking about our response to what God is saying to us in this time. So let us go right now into the service that is already in session. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength Bow down and worship him now. How great, how awesome is he. We stand, we stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Come on, bow.
and you know we serve a champion today. Hallelujah. 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 Our God is champion. Hallelujah. 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 There is only one day with power to save and to deliver and to set his people free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship your God. Oh, oh, how we worship. There is only one day. There is only one day with power to save. With power to save. Come on, sing with me. There is. There is only one day.
Come on here, Ray.
wherever you will pour me. That my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. but only you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We worship you. Oh, so Our King, oh Lord. You, Lord. You are worthy. And no one could worship you for me. Oh, my. 
will not be sad. I will not be sad. I will not be sad. God, I will not be sad. I worship you for my family today. I worship you for the healing over our land. And I will not be sad. We honor you, God. So we call is a worship all of our worship receive our worship all of our worship as our worship is a worship all of our Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly, God, you are worthy. And we give you worship. All of our worship belongs to him. And I pray today that that has been the cry of your heart in this season, to be worshiping God and to be in a new place with him. I believe that God has been stretching us and he has been growing us and he has been increasing us in our faith. And God desires from us the worship of our hearts. And so today we're going to speak briefly from the book of Romans chapter number one. And we are going to ask the question, have we abandoned God? Have we abandoned God? And, and God is trying to, to get our attention and today, as we look into God's word, it is my prayer that God would challenge our hearts and would bring us to that place where we can find that peace and that assurance in him. Heavenly Father and our friend, we thank you that you are God. You have always been, you will always be. Glory, power, honor, dominion, majesty, and might are yours. Thank you, God, for healing. Thank you for delivering. Thank you for redeeming. Thank you, Father, for pouring out yourself upon us. Lord, you have poured out yourself, like St. Paul says, as a drink offering, so that those of us, God, who have heard your voice and have trusted in faith, you have redeemed us. And God, even in this season, we continue to look unto you. We know that there are so many things that are changing, but God, you are in the midst of everything. You knew before it occurred, and so Father God, we trust you and we lean upon you. The songwriter says, what a fellowship, what a joy divine. We are leaning on the everlasting arms. And today we are leaning on you. And we pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to minister grace to our hearts. Father, we don't need anything but your presence. For if we have you, we have everything. And so today our desire is to seek first the kingdom. And your word says everything else will be added unto us. Thank you for your holy visitation. Thank you for your angels who have been protecting, guarding, and ministering to us. Even when we have not been able to see God, we know that your word says they are sent to ministers to heirs of salvation. And so we thank you, God, for this assurance that we have in you. And today, our desire is just to love you. Amidst all the flux and change that is taking place around us, our desire is to love you and to walk humbly with our God. And so we pray you would break our hearts today to the point where we are not merely sorry, but God, we are repentant. And we turn back unto you. Thank you for those who have received your touch from infirmities and affliction. And those who are in need of your touch, your word says, Say in a word, and thy servant shall be healed. And so thank you for this promise that we have. That God, if we come before you in faith believing, 
that whatever we ask will be done. We thank you that you have given us the power that if two shall agree on earth as touching, whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And so God, we thank you that uh, we are not left as orphans in this world, but you have empowered us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you then for meeting every need. We pray for our country. We pray that you would give us a desire as a people, God, to seek you, to seek you first and your righteousness, and everything else shall be added unto us. God, we commit ourselves to you afresh today, and we pray that your Holy Spirit would minister grace to our hearts, even through your word, and God, at the end, that we'll be better people. And so thank you for hearing and answering prayer. This we pray in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are called today to embrace the cross of Jesus and to hold on to him. Minister Jacobs will minister to us, embrace the cross. I am crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live. Jesus Christ now lives in me. I am crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live. Jesus Christ now lives in me. I am crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live. Jesus Christ now lives in me. I am crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live. Jesus Christ now lives in me. Embrace the cross with Jesus. Jesus suffered, though it will cost all you claim as yours. Your sacrifice will seem small beside the treasure. Eternity can measure what Jesus holds in store. Embrace the love the cross requires. Cling to the one whose heart you every day. Receive from Jesus fountains of compassion. Only he can fashion your heart to move as him. Lord Jesus, make us bolder to face with courage the shame and disgrace you bore upon your shoulder. Embrace the life that comes from God. Come trace the steps the Savior walked for you. An empty tomb concludes Golgotha's sorrow. Enjoy it until tomorrow, your cross of suffering.
Amen. Embrace the cross, the cross of Jesus. Over 20 years ago, a young songwriter by the name of Matt Redman, he was a worship leader in what was known as Soul Survivor Church in Watford, not far from London, England. And uh, it was the era of the introduction of what we call praise and worship music in the church, and, and, and the church was uh, comprised of many uh, young persons who were 20 years and, and, and a little bit older. And so the excitement of the worship experience was sweeping, of course, the world, and, and it has transformed the way that we have done church and praise and worship experiences. And it is said by Redman himself that to the credit of his pastor, there was the feeling that something was missing in the worship experience. And he said that the pastor requested, or not, not, not merely requested, but in that discernment, the pastor decided that there was something dynamic missing. And so these are the words of Redman, and he says, Pastor did a pretty brave thing. He decided to get rid of the sound system and the band for a season. And he said, we gathered together with just our voices. His point was that we had lost our way in worship, and the way to get back to the heart would be to strip away everything. He said it was probably some of the most awkward services that they had ever engaged in to have 20-year-olds just sitting down there with no drums, no guitars, no microphone, no sound system, no worship leader at the front, no band, no loud music, nothing. He said you could feel the heartbeat and the thump of every kick of the drum, but yet there was no drum present. And he said, as they sat there in the room, it was a deafening silence, and, and they would sit just with their Bibles, and, and, and this silence just overtook them. And Redman himself, who, who said it was sort of sheepish to be the worship leader and not be functioning in that capacity. But he, was, he said it was an incredible time of reflection. It was a time that helped to build character and identity that he said made him into the worship leader that he is today. And it was in that moment of quiet contemplation and reflection with just their Bibles alone for several weeks, he said that after a while, after some awkwardness, you could eventually feel the heartfelt prayer and then a cappella singing filled the room. And 20 years later and more, we now have the praise and worship song when the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to, you, you know it. He said it was a moment of quiet reflection and I've been thinking in recent times that as the body of Christ we have been missing some things. And we have been a little uncomfortable, and, and it's as if we are going through an existential crisis in our life. And you say, but pastor, what is an existential crisis? It is basically when, when you are thinking basically about your existence. And if you have big questions about your existence that involves the meaning of life, and, and, and you're just trying to find meaning, and you, you, you can't get to understand what it's all about, uh, they will tell you that you're going through an existential crisis. And it seems like many of us and the church of Jesus Christ is going through an existential crisis, asking ourselves, why do we exist? Who are we? Why am I here? What's the purpose? Can I be who God has called me to be if I don't have the opportunity to come into the sanctuary? Can I be who God has called me to be if I am not doing all those things like Redman described where I can come up here because you see, you're going to forgive me. I'm off script here, but you'll forgive me. I think that we got to understand something that a lot of us in the body of Christ really have been stripped of a lot of things because we really don't have the opportunity to do showmanship anymore. You see, the house of God had been a place for many of us to do showmanship. We had a leader and the, the, the song leader and the worship leader and we had all kinds of things. 
And so because those things have been taken away from us, we find it very uncomfortable and there is some dissonance that has been created and we are asking ourselves, who am I? Jesus said to his disciples, the foxes of old, the birds of nest, the son of man has no place to lay. He said, you're going to be walking the dusty roads with me. You're going to be resting at nights where no man, wherever you meet, night meets with, there is where you're going to. You see, what I'm getting at is the church of Jesus Christ, and I'm totally off script here, but that's okay. The church of Jesus Christ should meet, needs to meet. But the church of Jesus Christ needs to understand that there is a church gathered and a church scattered. There has never been a time in the life of the church in this modern era where we have to beseech God and ask God, why do we exist? Is it merely to put on my clothes and come on Sunday or on the Sabbath, whatever you call it? Is it merely to lord over people? Or is it to have a relationship with God, to be servants of God and leading others to have a heart like Jesus? Because you see, often we like to talk about those who are unchurched and those who we say don't know Jesus Christ. And I think that those of us who know Jesus Christ have to first reflect the light of Jesus Christ. So Romans chapter 1 and verse number 21 and quickly. It is Paul's letter to the church at Rome, and I'm going to ask you simply the question, we have abandoned God, and, and I'm going to share with you three quick points that, that, that should help us to, to appreciate some reality, and then we'll be through. Paul says this, for all of the new God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. And this is within the context of Romans chapter number one and Romans chapter two, where Paul was writing and, and the Jews were thinking that, you know what, we have, we have a, a very uh, uh, important position. And, and, and Paul says, listen, you don't think that you are any more important than the Gentiles. We are all guilty before God. And I think that it is an opportunity for us in this season to, to recognize that as we stand before God, that in as much as those who do not know God need to evaluate themselves, those of us who know God need to evaluate ourselves. And the first thing I want is to understand this, that true knowledge of God is suppressed when we abandon God. In Romans chapter 1 and verse number 21, the word of God says, notice this, it says that when they knew God, they neither glorified him nor gave thanks, but their thinking became futile and their hearts became foolish and darkened. You see, when, when we abandon the reality of God, what happens to us is our speculation becomes empty, our hearts become obscured from the truth, and we begin to display foolishness. It was David Foster Wallace, an American author, who was celebrated wrote many novels and short stories and essays, and, and, and Foster says this, he says, in effect, when we consider what is taking place around us, Foster made a very interesting observation. Because he wanted us to recognize that the reality is, when we suppress that true knowledge of God, we are going to do things that dishonor God. And he says, here is something that is weird but true. In the day-to-day -day trenches of adult life, there is actually no such thing as atheism. There is no such thing as not worshiping. Everybody worships. The only choice we get is what to worship. And a compelling reason for maybe choosing some sort of God or spiritual type is the reality that anything else that we worship will eat you alive. If you worship money and things, he says, if they are where you tap real meaning in your life, then you will never have enough. You will never feel you have enough. He said it's the truth. If you worship your body and beauty and sexual allure, and you, you will always feel, and you will always feel ugly, and when time and age start showing, you will die a million deaths before they finally grieve you. Foster says when we suppress, the, the word of God says when we suppress the true knowledge of God, the reality is that we become vain in our thinking, our speculations become empty, we display foolishness, and we do things that are obscure or far away from the truth. You see, the reality is that for too many of us, when we look at our own lives and when we look at what is happening around us, we have made some good things to be the ultimate things in our lives. And so, as one preacher says, 
those things that we make the ultimate things in our life are the things that we worship. Because we worship that which we serve. And I know many today would say, but I'm worshiping God, but that's the reality. We have to then open our hearts and strip away and see what is it that I can't live without. Because the thing that you can't live without is the thing that you are worshiping. If you think that I can't live without uh, my children, I can't live without... You know, there are so many people in this crisis who are just giving up because there are things they think they can't live without. Some people say, I don't do poor very well. I am so rich, I don't know how to do poor. So if they are stripped of all their riches, they can't survive because they have made that good thing the ultimate thing. And when we do that, secondly, that becomes idolatry. And so idolatry has replaced the true knowledge of God. And idolatry is when we engage in image worship and objects that have been created as Romans chapter 1 and verse number 28 says, they thought that it was not worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God. You know, you know what I find interesting? That people think it's not worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God. Today, to some people, the church doesn't serve any purpose. As far as they're concerned, the church is can remain closed. The church serves no purpose. After the church has been faithful in socializing, after the church has been faithful in ensuring law and order, after the church has been faithful in empire building, as one writer puts it, after the church has been faithful in instituting some of our social services that did not exist before governments began those social services, you tell me that the church has no purpose. And I tell you that you're not educated enough in church history to understand the role and importance of the church. It does not negate the reality that, of course, that in some of our local congregations and, and our, our belief systems, that, of course, we have caused some harm. But a church as it is, I'm not speaking of the localized church, I'm still talking about the church universal. It is still the most and, and important institution on the face of the earth. And that is why it's important for us to recognize that St. Paul says in Romans 1 verse number 28 that men do not retain the knowledge of God. And when we don't retain the knowledge of God, he says God gives them up so that they can sink into ignorance and moral corruption. Let me tell you something. You will be found to be fighting against an almighty God if you think you can fight against the church. Jesus Christ says, on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell, I was in Israel. And the tour guide took us and he says, listen, when Jesus said the gates of hell, he was demonstrating in this place where there was child sacrifice and idolatry and everything that was obnoxious. And he said, even that cannot prevail against the church. And so my brothers and sisters, you have nothing to fear. Idolatry cannot supersede the church of Jesus Christ. It would seem to be winning for a while, but it cannot win. And that is why it's important for us to recognize that when we think of the church and we think of idolatry replacing the true knowledge of God, for that is what is happening today in the life of many individuals. It was St. Augustine, a church father, who reminded us that we have reordered our love. And Augustine said this, that we have basically reordered our love. In other words, he says, our love is out of order. And what does he mean by this? You see, the reality is, he says to us that first of all, we must love God with all of our hearts, our minds, our souls. And that love has been reordered because when we ask some individuals, they would say to us, God is first in my life. Yeah, God is first. My family is next and my career is third. And then when you invert that triangle, you get their career first, their family and God last. And he says that we all the love that we have, we have to examine and re-examine and recognize that we have done something to recognize, to put our love for God in the wrong place. And that is why when we consider what Romans chapter 1 verse number 21 says to us, we must recognize that there are great things in our lives that we strive for. And recognize that in these striving, that all of it can be achieved and still be 
disillusioned for us. We can still find ourselves in a place where we are not happy, comfortable, or satisfied. For Augustine, again, the great church father, he told us that thou hast been made for thyself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds rest in thee. Simply put, he says man has been created for God. And man is always going to be restless outside of God. And so, you may set up these idols that you have reordered your love. And you may consider them as your worship because it provides you a sense of who you are. But the reality is, they do not make us who we are supposed to be. For the time will come, if it has not yet come in your life, when your heart will break. And if there is something in your life that you possess that cannot save you in that heartbreak, it means that you need God. And I'll say more that there is nothing that can save you in your heartbreak except it is God. And so understand this finally, that the love that we crave to restore our hearts is found in God himself. And Paul says in Romans chapter 1 and verse number 16, beautifully he penned the words, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. You know what man needs? Man needs the love of God that can lift him from his fallen state. When, when we think of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are thinking about the good news that God has delivered man from wrath. That's what the gospel is. You, you see, that is the function of the church. The function of the church is to spread the good news of the gospel that God has delivered mankind from wrath. And in so doing, we create disciples and followers of the way. There are many religions who say that, you know, uh, uh, follow us and, and you'll find the way. But Jesus says, I am the way. The difference is, Jesus himself says, I am the way. None of the prophets who've ever went before can claim that they are the way. And that is the function of the church, that through the gospel message, that mankind's heart can be pierced and understand that has been delivered from wrath. And it's that love that makes a difference. And that is why Paul reminds us in Ephesians chapter number 2, that when we think of the great love of God, that those of us, he says in Ephesians chapter number 2, who were dead in trespasses and sins, who once lived according to the course of the world, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedient, that God has awakened your consciences and your souls to righteousness. When your soul is not awakened to the righteousness of God, you seek it in something else. You seek salvation and, and, and righteousness and deliverance and acceptance in everything else except God. That is because mankind is hungry for something. Each of you, every single one of you, know deep inside of your heart, there is a longing for something. And if you know Jesus... On days when that longing comes, you know that you already have what your heart needs. And if you don't know Jesus, that is why you are constantly troubled in your spirit. You have done everything that you have thought you would like to do in life and you are still unhappy. You have accomplished everything that you have wanted and you are still unhappy. And man will be restless until he rests in God. And this is a season of the church in closing, my friends, where God is saying to us that we need to find our place for we have turned our backs on him. The reality is, deep inside of the heart of every individual, 
God is stirring. He's stirring a message because what God does is he challenges our faith to seek understanding in him. You don't go through stuff in your life just because. It is just, uh, uh, as many people w would say, it is coincidental. No. You go through stuff in your life because God is challenging your faith. And in that faith, you are seeking a deeper understanding. That is why people say all the time, I went through such a deep uh, 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 depression or anxiety or trouble that I sought God. I prayed every day. I read his word because that is your faith seeking understanding. You are not merely doing that because you think that is what you should do. That is the part of you that desires God that is seeking him. And that is why Foster says to us, that in the daily trenches of life, there really aren't any atheists. It is who you choose to worship. The question is, who are you worshiping? The question for the church is, who do we worship? Do we worship our own ideas, doctrines of men? Do we worship the work of our hands? Or do we see God? This is... This is one of the greatest seasons and opportunities for the church to minister. People are so broken. People are so hurt. People just don't understand. People have not prepared for a crisis. We as the church, we say that we have prepared. Our faith has been tested and now we can shear. Whether we are in the chapel or not, we can shear. For we only come to the chapel to get filled up. That's all you come to the chapel for, you know, to get filled up. We have been ringing the bell for years and the people not coming in. The same people coming in all the time. And if I dare say, many of us go out the same way. And God has given us a platform. We just have to know how to present that message. Put that message in the hands of young people. on their electronic gadgets. Send that message to the regions beyond. The word of God says, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the ends of the earth. This is our opportunity. All that we have needs to be stripped away and for us to see that God is using us in this season. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I know that you need him. I meet young people every day who ask tons of questions about God and the Bible. And, and I've said to many of my, my church colleagues, I said, the reality is young people want to know what the Word of God says. My experience has been that they want to know what it says. And they're saying, would you just tell me what the Word of God says? We have lost focus and we need to make the main thing in the church the main thing. Let me ask this question, because we've also been making a big fuss to come back into the house of God and and I look forward to that myself, but have you thought about how you are going to engage the lost in trying to get them in? Because I know by the time they say we can get back in, those of us who are regulars or whatever you want to call yourself is going to make sure I want to be there the first Sunday. Have we thought about the lost? Are we going to give them an opportunity to come? Are we going to say this service is just for... Uh, you know, but we have to think that the main thing must be the main thing. The church is to make disciples. And I think that as much as we would say that people who do not know God have abandoned God, we as the church, we have abandoned God too. And I pray that God would speak to us in this season how we can be true disciples for him. In the closing moments of this service, I want us to just bow our heads as we Reflect and just, uh, if you know God, if you have made a decision to walk with him, I know many of you are listening and viewing. And I just want you to ask God to search your hearts in the closing moments of this service. How can you, how can we be witnesses for him? And if you do not know God, this is an opportunity God is speaking to us, you see. This is a foretaste 
of what is to come. Jesus Christ outlines in the word of God that there is going to be even greater distress coming to the world. And I think that we need to begin to appreciate that this is a season that God is speaking to us. We're just going to sing one or two stanzas of that same chorus when the music fades and all is stripped away. And I know that for many of you, your music has faded. You are not the person you used to be. The past few weeks have changed you. Your financial situation has changed. Your music has faded. You can't keep the parties you used to keep. You can't do the stuff. The music has faded for many people. There are broken people who are carrying their burdens quietly. The music has faded. It's like our elders used to say, the dance is over. Many people are walking around just, just merely surviving. We are seeing them going, but, but, but we have no idea the weight of the burden that they are under. And I pray God for our mental fortitude in this season that we would not see that it is God who is doing any ill to us and we lose faith in God but that God is growing us and he's stretching us and every day of this experience and asking God in my own life God how can I be better what are you trying to show me what are you trying to teach me what, what am I supposed to learn out of this situation it's tough, but I, I know that, that you have given me the grace and you said your grace is sufficient for your strength is made perfect in the time of weakness. How much can I give? How many smiles can I give? And, and how many words of cheer and comfort can I share to others? Because I know that you have given me capacity. And that is what the church needs to ask God for even greater capacity in this season to help those who are weak. Those who have not had the opportunity or who have rejected it when we have made full use of it to strengthen ourselves in the things of God. This is why we had received all those words, all those impartations, all that prayer. This is why we received it for a moment like this. That we can stand firm in the midst of adversity. That is why. We received it. You went to the house of God and your family wasn't going with you. Now this is your time for your light to shine. You went to the house of God and your neighbor wasn't going with you. This is your time for your light to shine. And I pray that God would bring us back to that place where we recognize it's really just about Him. Take all the buildings, God. Take all the things we are like the church of Laodicea. We have all these riches. But we have removed ourselves from you. When the music fades. When the music fades. All is stripped away. And I simply come. Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll give you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself. For a song in itself is not what you have required. You, you search much, much deeper. deeper You're looking into my eyes. I'm coming back to the heart of my worship. I'm coming back to the heart of my worship. It's all about you. And it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've done. It's all about you. Oh, my God. 
continue this experience but let me share with you a few announcements and we thank you so much for your support in this season and our prayer has just been to bless the body of Christ and to to share with you in this particular time as God's Holy Spirit lead us and we appreciate those who come um, to the sanctuary and make this possible for so many of you across the world today we stand in solidarity with our brothers and sisters across the globe and as a church here at Antioch we as a local assembly, we are always mindful of the, the church triumphant, that we are part of a bigger gathering. And as we stand in solidarity with you, we know that there are brothers and sisters we've never seen. We don't know your names, we don't know your faces, but we believe together that we have been redeemed by our Father's blood, and we have been made one kingdom under the heavens, and one of these days together we will meet. But as we continue in this journey, I pray that God will continue to strengthen you wherever you are, in the task that God has called you to. We want to thank those of you who have prayerfully, morally, financially, and otherwise supported this ministry, and we want to encourage you that you, you, God has been good, and you can contribute, as our uh, congregants here have been doing in their giving of their tithe online, um, www.antiochbaptistskn.org, under the contribute um, section, or you can do direct transfers by our bank account, or um, many have brought your offerings physically also. We are not shy to, to speak about giving at this church because uh, we understand the season in which we live, but we also understand that many individuals uh, are gainfully employed fully at this season, and the tithe or the giving belongs to the Lord. We don't make apologies for that. We are not shy to say that. We believe in what we do. We know many of you may not believe in that, and that's okay. 
We are not upset because you don't believe that, but we want you to understand that we believe in what we do, and we have made a covenant with our God, amen. And because we have done that, we will do that as long as he gives us breath, and so we are not ashamed of that. And at our, our congregation, we are always mindful to help, and so that is what we do. And so we pray God will continue to bless you. Those of you who have been giving, I'm going to uh, pray because there are many who have given your offerings and we have not had our uh, services where we have brought the offerings and we have prayed, but I want you to know that we have prayed over those and pray God's continued blessings upon your life. Many of you have enjoyed the engagements that we've had and we, we are not through with those. You're going to see much more uh, of that, but um, as God's Holy Spirit leads us, every week we are going to come with you based on the way that the Holy Spirit leads us. And so we want you to be mindful of that. We want to encourage you also to continue to, to press on. And if you have a birthday this week, we wish you a very blessed, happy birthday. We haven't sung for you a while, and we are going to sing for you, for those of you who are celebrating birthdays this week. But before we do that, I just want to lift up before God those who have been given and those who don't have, and, and may God continue blessings rest upon us. Heavenly Father and our God, your word says that you're going to supply all of our needs according to your wishes in glory. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who supplies. We thank you that even in this season, Father God, that you own the bread baskets of the world. We thank you that even in this season, because you have called us out and drawn us unto you, that God, because we are obedient to you, you continue to provide favor. And so we thank you for those, God, who are entrenched, God, in their uh, uh, regular uh, areas of employment, and you have been faithful to provide for them, Father God. We pray that they would be faithful likewise in supporting the work and the ministry, oh God, that they have called them to. We pray, God, even now for those who do not have and they have received reduced hours on their jobs and, and, and they are also are out of a job, God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would just direct them and we pray that as we continue to minister to them, Father God, that you would look down from heaven and, Father God, you would touch their hearts and you would provide their needs even now because you are a supernatural God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or think. And so, God, we just lift them up before you today. We thank you, Father, for what you have done and continue to do, and we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're celebrating a birthday, we want to sing the birthday song for you and pray God's blessings on your life. We thank Radio ZIZ and television again and um, all of our social media platforms and all of you who have been with us every single week. We just bless God and we look forward to the opportunity whenever that is when we'll be able to come into the sanctuary and to continue. But as long as we are here, we continue to minister to you. If there are any questions, concerns that you ever have you would like to share with us, you can call us at 1-869-663-9885. 1-869-663-9885. And we'll be happy to share with you. We love God. We love you. We love ministry. We love people. We are so excited about what God is doing, and we give him praise. As you celebrate, have a wonderful one, and then uh, we thank Donnell for sharing with us today, and he's going to come, and he's going to continue in the worship experience, and bless your heart with a few more songs. May God bless you. Amen.
Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. For he turned water into wine. He opened the eyes of the blind. We serve a great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No one like him. Oh, come on, say. What are you turning into wine? is greater and he's stronger he deserves the glory he deserves the honor he deserves the praise he deserves our worship hallelujah father god we bless you hallelujah we lift our voice in praise hallelujah you deserve the glory and 
Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy Come on, join with me. You deserve the glory and the honor. Come on, lift your hands and worship. Wherever you are today, lift your hands and worship. Praise your holy name. You deserve the glory.
miracle. Hallelujah. There is no one else like our God. Hallelujah.